Hi everyone, my name is Anson. Here I'm going to present my term project for 15112, my freshman programming course in Carnegie Mellon. What I did was a color-based motion tracking system, which can not only track 2D motion, but 3D motion. I'll show that in a minute. Here is the main user interface for demonstrating this motion tracker. So let's first have a look at the motion tracking module demo. Here I'll show step by step how this motion tracking works. So here we have two windows. The left window is the camera monitor, and the right window shows the after effect image. At the bottom left corner, it shows the current step. The first step is to convert the image from RGB to HSV color space. In this way, I can track an object using its color, or its hue. In my case, it will be the pink ball. The next step is thresholding. In this step, the tracker distinguishes the pink ball from its background color, even under varying illumination. Another feature of this tracker is to change its target color. So here I have a color on my phone, and I'll click on it. So now the tracker changes its target color to the color on my phone. However, as you might notice, on the right screen there is a lot of noise. So the next step is to eliminate noise using eroding and closing. Both erode and closing are image transformation. So now you can see on the right screen most of the noise has been eliminated. Let me switch back to the pink ball. So the next step is to find out the center of mass of the cluster of white points on the right screen. As you can see now, the red dot is the center of mass. And as I move the ball, the red dot follows. And this means that I'm now able to track the motion of the ball. See, it's good. So this is all I need for doing 2D tracking. However, I'm not just satisfied with doing only 2D tracking because I figured that I can calculate the ball's 3D coordinate using its size as appeared in the image. Therefore, knowing the exact size of the ball in the image is very important. To better observe the size of the pink ball, I insert two LED inside the ball to make its appearance much more stable as perceived by the webcam. As you can see here on the right screen, the ball appears to be a very nice circle. So the next step is to find out the contour of the white points on the right screen and then fit it with a minimum enclosing circle, as you can see here. So it seems that the size of the ball is the diameter of the enclosing circle. But watch this. See if I rapidly move the ball, the enclosing circle becomes larger. This is because of the delay of the camera shutter. To solve this problem, instead of using a minimum enclosing circle, I use a minimum enclosing oval, as shown in the next step. As you can see on the right screen, there is a green enclosing oval, and inside it there is a red inscribed circle. The diameter of that circle is the same as the length of the minor axis of the oval. So as you can see, even if I move around very rapidly, I can still track the size of the ball precisely. This provides a very good basis for me to do 3D tracking. So now I'm going to run the 2D application demo. In this menu, user can choose whether to use the default pink color or a custom color to be tracked. So now we will go for the custom color. Now we will enter a color calibration process. Again, I'll use my phone to set the color to be tracked. So I'll click on it, and then press U, and then press Escape to continue. So here is my 2D application demo. It's not very fluent due to the recording software, but basically it's working well. The program is rendered in Panda 3D. Also, to be more convincing, I can invoke the webcam monitor by pressing F. As you can see, I'm indeed using the phone to control the little knife. Okay, let's go back to the main menu. And oh, by the way, since the main point of 
my term project is the motion tracker. I didn't put in much effort in decorating the games because those games are just demonstrations showing that um, my motion tracker actually works. Well, so now let's move on to the 3D demo. So here I have a 3D room and a lot of smiley balls. And I'm going to use the pink ball in reality to control the virtual pink ball here and let it move around in the 3D space and collide with other balls. So in this way, I can show that I'm indeed able to uh, do the 3D tracking. Again, to be more convincing, I would turn on the webcam monitor. So here we go. As you can see, I'm moving around my pink ball, and I'm scrambling those smiley balls. And as you can see, the virtual pink ball follows the real, the real pink ball very well. And additionally, I have a small test to see how precise this motion tracker is. So I have a rectangle box here, and I'm going to let the real pink ball move in a rectangular path and see if the virtual pink ball follows. So I'll start from here. I'll go right, and I move backward, and at the same time, slightly upwards. And then I move left, and then I move forward, slightly downward, and then move right again. So as you can see, the virtual ball is also moving in a rectangular path. So this means that the precision of my motion tracking system is quite good. The biggest advantage of this motion tracking system, I think, is simplicity. Because it only uses one camera, so it can be used on most of the laptops and do 3D tracking. And that's amazing. And the only one extra requirement is an evenly illuminated sphere with special color. And it's not difficult to build or manufacture one. So I think there is a lot of potential of this motion tracking system. For example, games. So if I had more time, I would certainly build a 3D game like a ping pong ball game. So just imagine how interesting would it be to play a ping pong ball game in front of the laptop like this. Well, so that's all for my turn project. Thank you for watching.